bountiful harvests we made this month, a tour of the California garden, some things for you to do, review of a cool gardening product, all this and a lot more coming up. So let's begin with all the harvests we made this month. Starting with beets. We were growing beets in our raised beds and as you can see here these are the Detroit dark red beets and they've grown pretty well. Beets are cool season crops and they grow very well in the spring season. You can see here nicely formed roots in these beets and the tops are very nice too. The beet greens are also very delicious. You can eat the beet greens. And we grew various colors of beets. You can see here multiple colors of beets. And you can also grow them in bunches like these. They will all grow around each other, produce really good quality beets. And you can look at our harvest here, beautiful looking beets. Moving on to cabbage. Our cabbages were also growing on the raised beds and spring once again is a wonderful season to grow cabbages. These are really big cabbage heads that we are harvesting here. You can look at these cabbage heads, beautiful looking cabbages and we grew multiple cabbage varieties, the golden acre cabbage as well as the Brunswick cabbage. All of these are great looking cabbages as you can see here, beautiful looking harvest. Carrots. Our carrots were growing in containers and these are the atomic red carrots and these have been growing for a very long time. Now usually carrots grow to full maturity in about 90 to 120 days and these carrots have been growing for quite some time. And I especially like growing the atomic red carrots because you don't get to buy them at the grocery store. These are great carrots to grow in your home garden. They're very sweet, juicy and delicious. And you can grow a lot of carrots in just one whiskey barrel as you see here. I did notice that some of these carrots didn't receive a lot of water, a lot of moisture. And that's the reason why they didn't develop a lot of these big roots. However, you can see some really nice looking carrots here. After washing them, this is how they look like. Beautiful looking carrots. Cauliflower. Our cauliflowers were growing in containers and you can grow really big cauliflower heads in just containers as you see here. The first thing we are doing is removing the leaves. Now cauliflower leaves are absolutely edible. You can eat them just like collard greens and they taste amazing. You can see two cauliflowers in one whiskey barrel. You can easily grow two cauliflowers in one whiskey barrel. And you can look at our cauliflower here. Beautiful looking cauliflower. And there's one more that we're harvesting. And this is the cauliflower head that we're harvesting. Cauliflowers do need a lot of water when they're growing. So make sure you have a drip irrigation system. And just look at our harvest here. This is a beautiful looking cauliflower. And here's the other one. Absolutely gorgeous. And the next set of cauliflowers we harvested were from our raised beds. Now these are the normal sized cauliflowers that you can grow in your home garden. And these are absolutely delicious too. Just look at our harvest here. Beautiful looking cauliflowers. Lemon guavas. We had lemon guavas growing in a container. And lemon guavas are the number one absolute favorite fruit that I like to grow. These are just so delicious. They have a very nice tropical taste. They have a soft skin, soft flesh. The seeds are soft too. And they taste very nice even when they're not fully ripe. This is the best thing about lemon guavas. Now lemon guavas are nothing like lemons. They don't taste like lemons, but they look like a lemon. And that's why the name lemon guava. And the reason I like this fruit so much is that it's a heavy producer. Here in Southern California, it produces a lot of fruits and it's very, very delicious. Strawberry guavas as well as lemon guavas are very tropical tasting fruits. You love eating them and I highly recommend that you grow them in your home garden. Just look at our lemon guavas here. Absolutely delicious. Absolutely fresh. Lettuce. Our lettuce plants were growing in the raised bed and you can see that they have grown to quite a big size now and it was time to harvest them. Now if you do not harvest lettuce when it grows to this size, they will start bolting. So you do want to harvest your lettuce at this stage when they are really good tasting, they are not bitter. And just look at our harvest here, beautiful looking lettuce. Radish. All our radish plants were growing in the raised beds and you can see here this is the purple daikon radish. 
beautiful looking radishes as you can see nice deep purple color and the radishes should always be direct sowed they don't like to be transplanted and you can see here these white radishes as well we grew a lot of radish varieties in this raised bed and all of them turned out to be pretty good and we did plant a mix of early maturing radishes as well as late maturing radishes so that we can have a constant supply of radish in our home and you can look at all these beautiful radishes we are harvesting there are a lot of worm castings a lot of organic matter compost in this raised bed and you can see how nice and loose the soil is this is how your soil should look like and this is our harvest multiple colored radishes absolutely crunchy and delicious spinach our spinach plants were growing in the raised bed you can see here beautiful looking bunches of spinach and as i mentioned earlier as well there are two ways to harvest spinach one way to harvest spinach is to just remove the leaves and let the plant grow and at the end of the season you can just harvest the entire bunch which is the next method of harvest that you see here and if you do not harvest the plants before the weather starts warming up they will go to bolt you can look at our harvest of spinach here beautiful looking spinach leaves and we were not done yet because we had a lot of spinach growing in our other raised bed as well you can see once again some of these spinach plants are going to bolt so this is a good time to harvest the spinach plants you can use up all the leaves they are very delicious you get a lot of spinach from just a small area as you can see here now some of the older leaves the yellowing leaves can be put into your compost bin and you can use the rest of the spinach leaves they are beautiful and they are very fresh and here is our next harvest as you can see here beautiful looking spinach leaves this was a great month to grow spinach what is it it's just a bird <laughs> And now let's take a tour of the garden starting with the raised beds. In our first raised bed we have peppers, a lot of varieties of peppers that we planted, hot peppers of different varieties. And my goal is to try out different pepper varieties this year to see which ones are the most prolific. I've also covered the raised bed with some hay, with some straw. It's a very important part of gardening to cover your raised bed with hay or straw or any other mulch that you want to use. In the second raised bed we have some eggplants and peppers, some tomatoes, and then some more peppers and some more eggplants. And once again you can see the raised bed has been protected with some mulch. Now I had to dig up the soil in the first and second raised bed because the tree roots had gotten in, but that part is now done. In the third raised bed we have some chives onion chives that we use a lot we have some shallots on the side and some more peppers lots of peppers these are green bell peppers different varieties again a couple of eggplants more eggplants here and the purple cabbage is still forming heads and we should be harvesting them soon in the next raised bed we just planted some cucumbers and we also planted some okra Now it's very early to plant okra but I do want to try out and see how this goes. We still have one cabbage to harvest and some cauliflowers as you can see here and a couple of eggplants. In the last raised bed we have some mustard greens that are still growing well. We have our spinach that we kept for harvesting the seeds. Our potato plants are doing okay, not great. And then we have our beets that we still have to harvest. A lot of beets still growing here, and some more spinach that we will probably remove to let the taro roots grow well. And the ivy gourd plant is finally beginning to show signs of life, as you can see here. And that concludes the tour of our raised beds. Let's now move on to the containers. On the first side, we have our firecracker plant, followed by this tomato. This is a celebrity tomato. we are growing it as a single stem followed by a cayenne pepper plant that's growing well we have our purple long eggplant that's now looking good followed by our mint plant which is now putting out a lot of growth after we trimmed it next up we have our santaka chili peppers that are overwintered from last year they need to be repotted some more cayenne peppers here 
and then our holy basil plant that's growing well now followed by our single stem tomato that's now grown crazy as you can see here needs some pruning we are also growing some cilantro in the same container as our fig tree the figs are now beginning to ripen and the plant is looking good but the cilantro also is looking pretty good as you can see here we have our sweet basil plants that we just started again in this container they're looking good on the other side of the containers we have a couple of pepper plants that are growing well we have our taro root plant that's now looking good the weather is getting a little better we have our kale and lettuce plants that are growing well we then have our shallots that are now looking good as well and these are the potato onions a bunching kind of onion that produces a lot of onions and here are our cluster beans now i don't like to grow cluster beans because they don't grow very well here but as you can see here they're already fruiting we will be able to harvest some cluster beans soon this is our potato plant this was planted from a potato seed in the pantry not looking that great we have our hyacinth beans plant that has now taken off we have some more tomatoes these are volunteer tomatoes that we planted they are growing a single stem our mint plant is looking good as usual lot of fresh new growth our ivy gourd plant is still dormant it's still too cold for ivy gourd to grow we have our purple potato plant that's looking healthy and nice our red veined sorrel leaves are growing well as well we then have our purple eggplant this is the black beauty eggplant and just look at our cilantro plant it's just taken off it looks amazing lots of green leaves that we can harvest very soon these are our strawberries looking pretty good followed by our egyptian onions that are now bolting but it's a good thing for egyptian onions to bolt because they produce onions on the top we have our carrot plant the burpee avon carrots followed by our tomato plant that's now looking good these are the big indian tomatoes followed by our snake gourd plant that we just planted in this container and these are our indian egg plants that we are really excited to try this year on the other side we have some more hyacinth beans growing in this container followed by some tomato plants the tomato plants are looking quite good here in this container these are the big indian tomatoes followed by a couple of pepper plants these are the green bell peppers we then have more hyacinth beans you can see all this compost that we added from our kitchen composter that i reviewed last month followed by our longevity spinach plant that's now coming back to life and that concludes the tour of our container garden and now let's look at the things for you to do in your garden starting with revitalizing potting soil now once your plants have grown and the pot is empty a lot of you have asked me how do i revitalize my potting soil to make it nutrient rich and i'm going to show you that the first step is to lay out the soil on a tarp and remove all the dead roots you do not want dead roots inside the potting mix they are better suited for your compost bin i then add some worm castings i get mine from vermistera these worm castings will add a lot of nutrients in the soil worm castings contain a lot of vital nutrients as well as they help the plant to build resistance to diseases we will then add some azomite or rock dust this will remineralize the soil add valuable minerals including trace minerals in the soil and just a couple of handfuls of azomite as well as a few handfuls of worm castings are enough for this whiskey barrel size container and now we mix it up we mix it up very thoroughly while we are mixing it up if there are any roots or any green leaves or dead leaves remove them you don't want them composting in your potting mix you want them composting in your compost bin after that is done just lightly water the soil to remove the air pockets 
This settles the soil down, removes the air pockets and makes it ready for planting. Our next step is to add compost. This is homemade compost. You can see there are a lot of earthworms, a lot of beneficial bacteria, soil organisms in the soil. And I prefer to lay the compost on the top because homemade compost is sometimes unfinished. You want your compost to feed the plants from the top. And we are planting our eggplants here. If you have unfinished compost in the soil, they do rob nutrients from the root zone. So I prefer to put it on the top and then layer it with mulch as you see here. This is just straw mulch with tack. And once you have laid out the mulch, just water gently so that it sticks to the soil and doesn't fly away in the winds. Our next to do for the month is how to prepare raised beds. Now I mentioned in the garden tour that there were a lot of raised beds that I dug up. And this is the reason why you can see the roots from the surrounding trees here have grown into the raised bed. Some of the roots are pretty big and tree roots can suck up a lot of water, a lot of nutrients from the soil and leave your vegetables wanting for more. Here you can see some more tree roots that have grown. They're pretty intensive, they're pretty invasive. And a permanent solution to this is to block their entry by putting a weed barrier. But we are gonna dig up the raised bed here and just remove the roots for now. And that should be good for at least a year or so. So here you can see some really big roots coming from the side and they're growing right into the raised bed. So we're just gonna use some garden tools to just hack into these roots and remove them. And try to dig as deep as possible. You want to remove the roots as deep as possible so that they don't grow back quickly. And you can see here such a large root here. This is probably coming from the mulberry tree growing on the side. But you can see how deep and big these roots are. Now once that is done, you want to remove all the root hairs that are there along the raised bed. And just turn in the soil, just aerate the soil a little bit. Aerating the soil is a very good thing to do on all your raised beds anyways. And you can see here some more roots that have invaded this raised bed. And this is one of the reasons your plants won't grow properly is if you have these kind of roots in your raised bed. You will also find some grubs in your raised beds that you must remove. And once that is done, just use a rake, a gardening fork or anything that you want to just lay out the soil properly. Here are some tree roots that we removed. You can see how big these roots are and how fibrous the roots are. And after watering it, this is how our raised bed looks like. And we planted some pepper plants here, lots of pepper varieties that you saw in the garden tour video. And we are laying some mulch here. This is the straw mulch. And this is extremely important because the sunlight will kill all the beneficial soil organisms. So you want to mulch your plants. And then just water it well. In the other raised bed, I didn't have a lot of nutrients. So I'm adding some worm castings here. About half a bag to a bag of worm castings per raised bed is good enough. This is about a three foot by six foot raised bed. And then we are gonna be adding some steer manure, which is a form of compost. You can add any kind of compost. If you have homemade compost, that's fine too. We're just using composted steer manure because it's a great amendment to the soil. We will break it up and then make sure that it's evenly distributed all along the raised bed. And after you distribute it evenly, the next step is to mix it into the soil very well. So we are using a spade here just to turn in the steer manure into the soil. And as you can see here, once you do that, this is going to add a lot of nutrients, a lot of organic matter into the soil, which will help your plants grow through the next season. Adding compost or manure also conditions your soil while adding all these nutrients. And once that is done, just make sure that you level your soil very nicely on the raised bed and then water it in, water in really well to make sure that the soil settles down. And once the soil settles down, you are then ready to begin planting. Just make sure that you water deeply so that the water reaches all the areas in the raised bed and the soil settles down and your raised bed is all set for planting. In the gardening product section of this monthly episode, we will be reviewing a product that will help you grow a lot of vegetables, a lot of seeds inside your home while you're waiting for the weather to warm up. And this is the Mars Hydro Grow Tent. And this is how the Grow Tent looks like. And this is the light that we're using for the Grow Tent. It's a pretty well-built Grow Tent. 
very secure lights very nice product overall and let's see the details of this product now first of all this product was sent to me this is not a sponsored review mars hydro is not paying me to make this video and all opinions are just honest opinions of what i feel about the product the grow tent comes with a good user manual plus all the accessories that you need to assemble the grow tent and i was really amazed at how many accessories it comes with and it's easy to assemble the grow tent so i won't go into all the details but this is how the grow tent looks like the pieces fit in easily and the grow tent goes on top and this is the grow light that we used with the grow tent as you can see here this grow light is pretty well built it has a lot of leds and some supports that will hold the grow light and it was very well packaged too it comes with a lot of accessories it comes with a lot of attachments everything that you need to assemble your grow light and start using it and here are all the parts you can see the led lights here four of the led lights and two holders that will hold the led lights in place plus the driver the led driver plus a lot of accessories now i was really surprised at how easy it was to assemble the grow light they have thumb based screws everywhere to attach the LEDs to the side panels and the driver itself can be moved around so you can position the driver appropriately and then use thumb screws to tighten the base to the driver and this is how the grow light looks like after it's assembled it's a very easy assembly and you're able to connect all these grow lights to each other so you don't have to run a ton of wires around it's a pretty well thought out design as you can see here we are attaching the lights individual lights to the main adapter which goes into the driver and once again these are thumb screws you can adjust the position of where you want to hang the grow lights and they do come with these hangers the side hangers and they are of pretty good quality they are adjustable you can hang them as high or as low as you want so overall a pretty good design for a grow light very good components and very good product quality and here is our assembled grow tent with the grow light as you can see the grow light can be hung to the grow tent via these rods on the top these panels on the top and it's a pretty good design as i mentioned the grow tent itself has a very nice reflective coating to distribute light across to all your plants and let's turn it on and as you can see here this is a pretty good quality light very bright extremely bright actually the camera cannot really capture all the lumens that this led emits it's a pretty good quality light and they also have holes on the side where you can put the wires through it's a pretty well thought out design so that you can take the wires out and then close the grow tent and they also have a little window there where you can peek into what's growing inside the grow tent but aesthetically it looks very pleasing very nice and let's open up the grow tent it has high quality zippers there are two zippers on the door of the grow tent and as you can see here it's pretty high quality and you have a lot of space here i did put a growing rack inside so that i could grow multiple vegetables in tiers as you can see here and then i also upgraded the racks later as you will see but this is a great place to grow your seeds indoors under the grow lights the temperatures are warm and here are the new storage racks that i used to increase the capacity of the grow tent as you can see here i'm growing a lot of seeds a lot of plants inside this grow tent on the top and on the bottom i kept plants that don't require a lot of light like beetle leaves and some cuttings that i'm growing some seed starting mats as well where seeds are germinating so all in all this is a great design it's a great product and this will really improve your gardening efficiency the amount of vegetables and amount of seeds that you can grow indoors before the weather warms up so there we have it folks that was our episode on the california garden for the month of april if you like this video hit that like button and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you hit that subscribe button for all future updates we'll see you again soon happy gardening